I wish this thing made noise. <laughs> it's been one year! So yeah, it's been one year since I started my YouTube channel, which is kind of a milestone in and of itself. Uh, it's been a really fun journey. It took me a while to actually start a YouTube channel. There was a, a few things that held me back, I guess. When I tried to make videos in the past, I really disliked editing. I think part of it was because it takes so much time and I was bad at it. <laughs> I really just felt like I was slower at editing than everybody else. You know, it takes me hours to edit. I'm like, oh my gosh, it must be so much easier for other people. I think it helped me a lot to realize that it takes everybody a long time to edit. I also felt like it was too late. Like, obviously there must be other dice makers on YouTube, so it's gonna be too late for me to start a channel when people are already off watching those makers. Also false, apparently I'm the only dice maker, really, that's been posting on YouTube. I did worry I was gonna be bad at it, and I kind of just had to reckon with the fact that I was going to be bad at it. And we will watch my first video a little bit later on, just to see if I was bad at it or not. There also was a certain amount of fear that people would think that I was just like crazy for trying to be a YouTuber, which is a little bit odd because I don't think other people are crazy for being YouTubers. So why did I start now? Well, um, I realized that it really didn't matter. I might as well just do it. <laughs> if I was gonna be weird and, and bad at it and stuff, that's fine, who cares? And I'm really glad that I did. All right, let's go react to my first ever video. We're gonna go, we're gonna go back to my first video that I ever made and take a look and see how it is because it's been a year and things have changed. I've got a new microphone and I've hopefully gotten better at things, but let's, let's give it a shot and we're gonna, we're gonna react to my first video. <laughs> hey guys, it seems like folks have been curious, so today I'm gonna go through step by step how I make the molds for my dice. Seems fine. If you want to follow along and make your own molds, there's a few supplies you'll need. Um, you'll need Legos, packing tape. My microphone's scissors, definitely gotten better. That's dice, for sure. Or just any old set of dice. You, you can use any dice. But if you, I do you think masters. that I want to go back to showing off materials at the beginning of videos like this. I guess I've kind of moved away from that for some reason, but it does seem more useful that way. I use Moldstar 15 slow because I like the longer work time, but it's up to you what you want to use. Oh, you can see the foot of the first tripod I used to. That thing sucked. I have better tripod now. I use Legos because I can make whatever size I need. I got, I got a nice tripod now. I actually got a second one of these because I liked it so much. And it's so much sturdier than that first one. This one is great. This one's good. I could bludgeon a man with this. Now that the Legos are all put together, it's time to break out the packing tape to make the bottom of the forms. I had a lot of people ask me about how to make molds, because um, I was streaming before I did this. I had quite a few people that came into my chat and asked me, you know, if I made my own molds and where I got them from, to stick the die directly onto. Which means that, Those dice yeah, I have all the like background noise from Even doing all that stuff. I don't have as much of that now because I like to on the die, like so watch YouTube videos and stuff while I work. <laughs> so I usually just cut all the audio out and put music. I think I should make some more molds probably. I'm using I, a I always need more molds. Honest, honestly, this is not as bad as I thought it was gonna so be. I'm just pouring them into two identical cups. Like my so audio is definitely better now, but and the information stuff is good. It has pretty good pacing. It's not a very long video. Oh, it's actually a longer video. A lot of the videos that I've done since then, have, since then were a lot shorter. They were a lot shorter. They were like a four minute tutorial video. This one's apparently nine. There's a couple things to do while pouring to help prevent air bubbles from getting into the molds. Uh, one of them is pouring in a really thin stream so that large air bubbles can't sneak their way in there. And one of the other things is to pour into the bottom of the form so that the silicone is rising from the bottom instead of getting poured on top and flowing downwards. That way air can't get trapped underneath it. I like how I talked about pouring the silicone into the bottom of the mold and filling it up from the bottom while showing me pouring it on top of the dye. <laughs> why, why did I do that? <laughs> Oh, and another way is to just slam the crap out of them. <laughs> that brings the air to the surface. Okay, I that was that was pretty good on my part to uh, my molds in a pressure pot. Shout later when I'm making dice. While I was tapping it loudly. Uh, that was okay. Good good that that's a good one past me. That's a good one. 
Man, I hate making molds. <laughs> There's so many steps in this process. No wonder this is a nine minute long video. I don't know, I just find making molds kind of boring. If if I could get rid of like one step of the mold of the mold of the dice making process, it would be making mold. I would just perpetually have nice, good new molds and not have to make more. Cause there's just there's so many steps. There's so many steps. I'm using a pair of scissors here to clean up the molds a little bit. I made it a little bit easier for me recently by breaking it up more, but that does mean that I end up making a new set of molds once every two weeks ish. So, you know, it takes a while because I have to do the base part and then I, the next week I go around and I do the lids part. So it still takes forever to make molds and it's just a lot of steps, but I need molds, so I gotta make them. Uh, also something I've picked up after making a lot of dice. I usually try to make one key different from the others so that it's easy at a glance to see what direction I also the still goes. do this. Follow the corners where I make the keys different because I... How the lid goes on in the moment. Yeah. I've definitely put things on the wrong direction well, before and gone, oh no, and had to like too. switch it and then it ends up later. weird. This isn't how I used to make my on, molds. I've That's definitely, ch you know, changed yeah. a little bit as I've gone. I used to do one big slab mold where everything was all, all now, normally, where the whole set was all in one mold. Let it cure, um, more and then I cut out the bottom of like some medicine together, cups and put tape there, and they were I had re like little round molds for a while. Finally, I got to the the Legos, and I think this works best for me. Like it is but kind of annoying having to make the little mold forms because that takes a little bit of time putting all the Legos That's together in the size that I need them. But it just seems to work well. I like the versatility of it. Oh, I will say. Let me pause this a second. So, I'm using Vaseline on this set of dice, which does work and it works really well. Um, I have been trying recently using just mold release. So I have like a spray mold release. I just spray the whole top of the, the mold uh, with mold release before I pour the lid. And that seems to work pretty well. It is a little bit more difficult to get the lids off. You have to be a little bit more careful because it's very easy to like tear the silicone around where the dye is, I've found. Um, with the Vaseline, it comes off super easy. Otherwise, that is a lot quicker than trying to get all the Vaseline in there very, very nicely and evenly and precisely. So that's also an option. From there, it's back into the pressure pot. Wait overnight for them to cure again. Take the tape off. Remove the dice. And your new molds are ready to be used. Hopefully you found this video useful. And if you'd like more videos from me in the future, hey. be sure to let me know what you'd like to see next. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Bye! You know, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I was I was not sure, because it's been so long since I've watched that video, whether it was gonna be good or bad or what. Like, obviously it's not perfect or whatever, but but for a first video, I feel like it's pretty good. Maybe I'll come back and watch that video again next year and be like, oh gosh, what was I thinking? But for, for just a year, I'm pretty happy. Let's continue on into May. I also found a style of video that I found really fun to edit, which was little speed pour, as I've called them, videos, where I just take some video footage of people making dice and then I set it to music. The first couple of speed pour videos that I did here, I didn't really line it up with the music at all. I just kind of took video clips and cut them up and put music in the background. I really started doing those because they were something I'd kind of seen before. It, they seemed popular at the moment with a lot of like short term, short term? With a lot of short form videos like on TikTok and that sort of thing, although I'm not, I, I, shorts are not my thing. I'm enjoying the longer, longer videos. I also made a sort of tutorial video showing how I make my galaxy dice. Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how I make my galaxy dice. The galaxy dice were one of the first dice that I ever made and sold, and I try to keep them kind of stocked in my shop at all times, because they're like my staple, I guess. They make me very nostalgic <laughs> in a certain regard. I also started a part-time job at the end of May. It was a very busy time for me. 
it kind of lined up in a way where I was trying to do everything at once. But I mean, I've continued on with the part-time job. I still have it and I've continued on with the videos and it's worked out all right, but it does mean that I don't have a ton of free time. <laughs> Leave your suggestions in the comments below. I'd uh, love the ideas. I'll see you guys later. Bye. In June, I switched over from Twitch to YouTube for streaming. All right, looks like it's time. Let's go. I just have to uh, figure out YouTube. <laughs> so I did stream before I did edited videos. I do think that that got me more comfortable with being on camera because being comfortable on camera is a skill. It's not something that just comes naturally to you. It's a bit like having a photo taken of you and then having to act natural because it's really not natural if you know you're being watched. June is also when I changed from adding just some background music to some clips of videos to actually lining up the video clips with the music, you know, on the beat and stuff. And that was a lot more fun to edit and also I think made them a lot more fun to watch. And then from there, I, I kept mostly making speed pour videos for a while. I still make them now, but I'm, we'll talk about future plans a little bit later in the video. This was also the month that I made my first video of a commission that I got. It was sort of a test to see whether that's something I might want to continue with. So this was actually a commission that was for someone that had I'd worked with before. So they knew that it was kind of a test that I was doing to see if it's something I might continue or not. But yeah, I think that that's really cool doing a video for each commission. There's something really fun about seeing how something of yours is made. And so I thought that added enjoyment and value to my commissions to a certain extent to be able to see how the things that you got were made. In July, I released six videos. Kool-Aid. Cheers. At the end of July and in the beginning of August, I started trying some different stuff, some different types of videos. Just a few because variety means I have to plan more, which takes time and I started a job and I started to focus on the job and making dice more than on the video making. It, 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 I had a lot going on, but I did another tutorial. Hey guys, today we're gonna take a look at how to do a reverse Petri in a set of resin dice. I tried doing dice based on AI since that was popular at the time. So I started out by narrowing it down to three of the AI generated images. And I found that those were fun, but again, they were they were more work, so they weren't as common as the Speedport videos were. In September, I posted my most watched video. Hey guys. Which was a liquid it, core so tutorial video. At how I make liquid core dice. I realized dice that tutorials do really well. I really should get back into making some more tutorial videos, but I'm not really sure what I want to make one on. So if there's a technique or something you'd like to see, you should comment down below and let me know. And maybe I'll make another tutorial video. So my original plan was to focus on entertainment type videos more than instructional type videos, because my original thought was that I wanted to cater towards people who would buy from my shop, not people who wanted to make things like what was in my shop. But since then, my plans kind of changed. Originally, I wanted to be a dice maker who made videos, but I've realized since then that I'd be okay with being a YouTuber who makes dice instead. It's kind of a small distinction, but I'd be okay with either focusing on the dice or focusing on the videos, because both are a lot of fun. In October, I got into watching videos where artists on YouTube talk about their income. 
I thought it was really interesting seeing where people got their money from as artists because you end up with a lot of different income streams, I feel like. You can't just make art and sell it if you want to make enough money to survive. So you have to find some other little sources of income too. Find some bread and butter items, so little things that are easy for you to make that you can sell a lot of or you need to find some sort of passive income, something where you can make it once and sell it multiple times. So like art prints, that's not necessarily passive, but you can dr draw it once and then sell it multiple times. Patreon, YouTube, AdSense, all sorts of different little things that contribute to income. But uh, anyways, I thought it was really interesting. So I decided to do a video like that. So I've done quite a few commissions over the past couple of years that I've been making dice. I also tried another little business video where I talked about taking commissions and what you would need to do, so stuff like that. Your own website, it's going to be important to let people know what you're offering. I haven't really kept up with that, but I kind of want to go back to it just because I still find that stuff really interesting. So I figure other people might find that stuff interesting too. I just have to find the time. November had a lot of the same old, same old speed pour videos, that sort of stuff, but it is marked by my first ever vlog, which was the first ever convention I went to. It's really fun going to in-person events and actually talking to people face to face. So I definitely want to do more stuff like that in the future. And I might vlog it too. I have a convention as I am recording this, it is coming up, but I can't remember if it's going to be before or after this video comes out. It might be around the time that this video comes out, but I'm debating vlogging that one too because it was so much fun the first time. In December, I reached 500 followers. Wait, no, that's not right. Subscribers. <laughs> oh no. Oh. <laughs> also in the middle of making this video, I just reached a thousand subscribers too. So thanks everybody. January is when I started really thinking about how I wanted to improve my YouTube channel. So I started thinking about thumbnails. I started thinking about what I should title things more. I really started thinking about it in like November and December, but January and February are when I actually started trying some different things just to see how they went. For example, the cover of the Minecraft dice. I changed that a couple of times just to see what I liked the best. And the cat's design a set of dice. I took some photos. Well, I had my brother take some photos for me. So I had some stuff to use in thumbnails, just some images of me. So I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube and there's a couple of things that you need for that. You need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of video time watched in the last 365 days. So in February, I started looking at that a little bit more and I realized that I'm doing fine on gaining subs, but I'm not in line to get watch hours. I also realized that while I enjoy editing the speed pour videos, the videos where I have video clips lined up to music, those aren't really the videos that I watch on YouTube. I, the ones that I actually watch are the ones where people are talking about what they're doing and giving a little insight into their process or even just talking about their day while they work. So I decided I should make some longer videos and I decided to try them with voiceover. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This one is gonna be a little bit different from videos past. I, I had done a voice acting class back in 2020 via Zoom. And so I went looking through a whole bunch of resources that we'd been sent when I did that class and looked at a bunch of different microphones and stuff. And it was kind of funny because I think the like week after I was looking into microphones and had decided what I wanted, uh, my dad texted me and was like, what do you want for your birthday? Anyways, I got a very nice microphone for my birthday. So thank you, dad. I continued on with those slightly longer videos into April, about 10 minutes or so instead of three to five. You know, apart from the three hour long video that I made that I didn't think anyone was gonna watch and lots of people have watched. I also realized that I want to start branching out more. 
trying some new styles and types of videos, slightly different things that are still within the realm of resin and dice and D&D, &D, but maybe do some other things that fall within that category. Part of that is because I watched a video that pointed out that having a lot of the same types of videos are great for keeping an audience. But if you want to grow an audience, you need some variation so that you have slightly different groups that you're catering towards. That kind of leads us to where we are now. So we are back in May, this time in 2023 instead of 2022. I think I've come a long ways as far as quality of my videos has come. And I'm excited to see where the year takes us. I've definitely learned a lot in this past year. I have some plans for what I want to do moving forwards. I want to have some more variety. I want to have slightly longer videos. More videos where I'm like doing voiceovers and explaining my process, because those are the ones that I enjoy watching. I do want to do some speed pour videos. I'm not going to get rid of them completely, but I think I'm going to limit them more to commissions and maybe some of the Patreon D20s that I make. I think those will be good, and that'll be, you know, maybe one, one or two a month-ish. Just, you know, slightly fewer of them, but still there. I still want to continue live streaming. I still enjoy that a lot, and I want to do some more fan art dice from other pieces of media. I do have plans for another piece of media that I'm gonna make some dice based on. I, re I realized that probably the best number of videos for any given piece of media is like one to five, because you have more than that, and it's just like, how am I gonna schedule these so it's just not a ton of the same video over and over again? I say that, but the next series is gonna have 13 videos, so we'll see how that goes. But after that, after that, I'm gonna hold myself to the one to five video range. And that's my first year on YouTube. Thanks for coming along on this journey, guys. I do really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all the support on Patreon and just being in my Discord and all the nice comments on videos and stuff. It's It's been great. Even if I never get monetized, I'll probably stick with it, but I am on the way. So if you aren't subscribed and you wanna help me out, you could subscribe. Watch my videos, I need watch time hours. So hopefully we have a lot more years to come. But until then. I'll see you guys later. Bye. We should do so. This could probably go away now. <laughs> I think I've had that was enough cake for me. Um, I just ate, ate far more cake than I really wanted to. I did not eat all of this cake. Okay. <laughs> do you like my hat? Yep. <laughs> do you like my hat? <laughs> Just uh I was thinking alternatively I'm very excited like I do I do have at one point one two the cake Oh no Mmm <laughs> strawberry should I take a handful of this cake? You can if you want. Yay.